This math teacher is amazing. The Pentagon intercepts a telegram from the enemy. But it's all tens of thousands of sets of numbers, which even computers couldn't decipher. However, relying on this math teacher's powerful numerical talent. In just three minutes, he quickly decrypts the crucial information. 40-7-41-05 represents New York. 40-6-13-8-67 represents Cadillac Mountain in Maine. And 48-03-01-26-35 represents the Bogite grasslands in Minnesota. He converts the numbers into positions and coordinates. Marks them on a map and decodes the enemy's route into the United States. Everyone around is astonished. We mobilize the top decryption experts. But they couldn't solve it in three years. You managed to do it in just three minutes. This math teacher is that incredible. 100 times more impressive than the decryption experts. Is the math teacher crazy? In school, he observes a group of pigeons every day. When asked what he's doing, he says he's deducing an algorithm to explain the pigeons' trajectories. Everyone mocks him for applying mathematical formulas to pigeons saying he's crazy, but the math teacher is serious. Back in the dorm, he calculates the pigeon's flight paths, incorporating parameters such as the population, weight, gender, flight distance, and even egg-laying time into a paper. The professor is amazed. It's incredible. The math teacher is a genius. He glances at someone's tie and immediately thinks of the pattern's origin. He rotates a cup, and sunlight refracts into arcs on a lemon, combining the lemon and cup. The pattern coincides with the tie. He tells the person that even though his tie is ugly, there must be a rational explanation in mathematics, leaving the person embarrassed. The man, named John, has an IQ of 192, but low EQ. He gets into Princeton University and receives a Carnegie scholarship. While his classmates are busy publishing papers, he never attends classes, instead doodling on the windows and studying pigeon trajectories. Faced with classmates mocking, John says attending class dulls the mind. He and his rival Martin both aim for admission to the Wheeler Labs, which admits only one person each year. Martin mocks John, saying he hasn't produced a decent paper, which eventually cuts to John's heart. The math teacher wants to visit Einstein, but the principal refuses, saying John lacks academic achievements. The supervisor asks John to look at the professor in the hall who just won the Nobel Prize. Everyone offers their pens to him, which is the highest form of gesture that shows respect among scholars. Returning to the dorm with no clues, John is frustrated and even bumps into glass. He gives in to the reality and tries to take away his desk and return to class. His roommate stops him, saying he's not wrong, and the solution is outside. The roommate then pushes the desk out the window, shattering it. John feels relieved. Genius is about to awaken. John uses mathematical formulas to pick up girls. In a bar, people want to approach a blonde girl. Following the economist Smith's theory, individual ambition promotes the common good, but John also thinks the opposite that if everyone competes for the blonde, most will fail, also pursuing others later won't succeed either, as nobody wants to be a backup plan. However, if everyone starts pursuing others from the beginning, everyone can have a partner, achieving mutual benefit. John discovers a flaw in Smith's theory and finds the topic for his paper. John diligently writes his paper in the dorm, and after weeks of research, he presents the 27-page paper to his mentor. The paper shocks the mentor overturning a 150-year-old unbreakable economic theory. With this theory, John successfully enters the Wheeler Labs. Even his rival Martin congratulates him at a gathering. Five years later, John becomes the leader of the Wheeler Labs, also helping the Defense Department decrypt advanced codes in his free time. The math teacher surpasses decryption experts. In 100,000 sets of numbers, he decrypts the crucial information in just three minutes. 40-7-41-05 represents New York. 40-6-13-8-67 represents Cadillac Mountain in Maine. He converts the numbers into positions and coordinates, marks them on a map, and decodes the enemy's route into the United States. This makes all the experts admire him. John sees a man in black on the second floor, asks about his identity, but the general doesn't answer and orders John to be taken out. John can only return to school to continue teaching. Faced with a full classroom, he glances at the textbook for only two seconds throws it into the trash, complaining that it's a complete waste of time. He then writes a math problem on the blackboard and leaves. After school, men in black from the Pentagon stop him. They are from the Defense Department and take John to a secret research room. They say the Soviet Union is manufacturing atomic bombs, and plans to detonate them in the United States. They transmit codes in newspapers and magazines. And the officer asks John to decrypt them. John immediately agrees. And they implant an electronic key in John's arm. These numbers change periodically. It's the code for the drop point, and the officer is his only contact. 
A female student tries to flirt with the teacher. Ellie approaches, claiming to have solved the problem on the blackboard. John bluntly says her answer is wrong. Ellie invites John to a dinner. And John, invited by a female for the first time, nervously goes through 500 poses, before taking a photo with the governor. Ellie carefully adjusts John's tie and puts her handkerchief in his pocket. Under the stars, John draws a pattern Ellie likes with stars, and just like this, they get married. John continues to decrypt codes, finding key information at a glance and tearing it off. He tears them off, organizes them into answers, puts them in an envelope, seals it with wax, and enters the code from his arm at night. He opens the gate and puts it in the mailbox. Everything proceeds systematically, that night, as John is about to leave. A military officer arrives, asks him to quickly get into the car. Two cars follow them, shooting at them. John curls up in his seat, afraid to move. The officer turns into a skilled driver, firing back and drifting to shake off the pursuers. They successfully escape. Since then, John becomes nervous when he sees a black car. Even turning on a light startles him. However, this is when Ellie becomes pregnant. John tries to resign but is rejected by the officer. And to protect her, John sends her back to her parents. Luckily, his roommate shows up with his niece, which brings great comfort to John. John is a genius who decoded the enemy's messages. One day as he is teaching classes, three mysterious men in black enter his class, realizing they are Soviet spies. He runs but is subdued by them, with no one around trying to help. When he wakes up, he's in a strange room. John tries to run away but forgets he's tied up. He sees his roommate at the corner, suspecting his roommate betrayed him, and frantically curses him. However, the men reveals they're in a mental hospital, and he's the dean. After examination, John is diagnosed with schizophrenia. The dean tells Ellie that he had this since his university days. His roommate, niece, and the military officer were all hallucinations. John was living by himself throughout his university time. With no roommate, Ellie comes to John's office. The wall is covered with pieces from all kinds of magazines. Ellie then comes to the mailbox. The coded lock is already damaged, and the house is empty. The men decrypts 100,000 sets of numbers in only three minutes, becoming a decryption expert. But he has schizophrenia. Ellie finds John and takes out all the letters he sends. They are all sealed. No one has receiving the letters. This is all your imagination. John is in despair. After he goes back to his ward, he cuts his arm, revealing no electronic key. John understands the reality of his situation, and willingly undergoes treatment, watching the painful John on the hospital bed. Ellie also suffers. John undergoes a year of treatment, no longer experiencing hallucinations. Ellie gives birth to their child, but the prolonged medication hinders John's ability to work, take care of the child, or be intimate with Ellie. All the burdens of life come down on Ellie's shoulders. John secretly stops taking medication, experiencing hallucinations again. The military officer reappears and John Rism's decoding. Ellie discovers it and runs home, feeling uneasy. Never let a patient with schizophrenia look after a child. John left the child unattended in the bathtub. Luckily, Ellie arrives in time to save the child. John explains that his roommate was giving the child a bath. Ellie realizes that his hallucination has come back. So she calls the dean. At the moment, the officer is about to shoot Ellie. John quickly gets up to prevent, but accidentally pushes Ellie to the ground. Ellie is angry and runs away. John recalls the appearances of the three men, and finds a flaw in his hallucination. He stops Ellie's car, realizing that his niece hasn't aged in all these years. It's the first time John sees through his own hallucinations. The director insists on taking John back to the mental hospital. But John firmly states he will use his IQ of 192 to overcome schizophrenia. Ellie supports him. Two months later, John returns to Princeton University. His former rival has now become a professor. John asks Martin to allow him to stay believing the familiar environment will help him dispel hallucinations. Even though with their unpleasant pass, Martin lets him stay because he appreciates his talent. A patient with schizophrenia becomes a professor. The first day on his return, John experiences his hallucination in front of a crowd. He starts arguing with the officer. Martin arrives in time to stop him. Since he cannot make them disappear, John decides to ignore them. He says goodbye to all three of them. Seeing the niece drenched in tears, John still decides to leave them. In school, he has the help with Martin. At home he has Ellie. John is slowly getting back on track in his familiar Princeton University. Decades later, John still does derivations on the window and discussing projects with students. When a man approaches him after class, he first asks the female student if she could see a man. When getting a positive answer, he would talk to him, making sure he's not a hallucination. The man tells him 
He has won the Nobel Prize in Economy. His theory of equilibrium has become the foundation of modern economy. Do you know the highest gesture of respect when receiving a Nobel Prize? John walks into Harvard University's dining hall. It's been 47 years since he last came here. At this moment, one professor come by, placing his pen in front of him. Then, more and more people start placing their pens in front of him. A gesture of utmost respect and recognition. He becomes a respected scholar. During the Nobel Prize ceremony, he declares his belief in mathematics and the reasons behind all the equations and logic. But it wasn't until the second half of his life that he realized, only in the equation of love can one find the true logic. John passionately confesses his love to Ellie. You are the reason to my everything. Ellie's eyes are filled with tears, and the audience erupts in lasting applause. The film is called A Beautiful Mind. Question of this episode, do you like math? If you do, comment 111. If you don't, comment 222. This film is adapted from the true story of John Forbes Nash Jr. The Nash equilibrium and game theory he proposed have had a major impact on economics. This is a great film. I recommend watching it. Remember to like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.